So for this video, we're going to take up the Proved Trigonometric Identities homework sheet. There are 15 questions, but 15 is broken up into A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right, so let's look at number one. So I would argue number one, two, and three are essentially the same questions. So for question one, their expectation is probably to use the addition formula for so of sine to prove this trig identity, but you can easily just use equivalent trig expressions. So if this were to be on the test, I would be very ha I'd be happy with either way of doing this question. Um, same could be said for number two. So we have cos of x plus pi over two equals minus sine x. So the way I did it was using equivalent trig expressions. Uh, but you could easily use the addition formula for cosine and get the exact same answer. And that's a theme for all 15 questions. There are many, many, there are infinite ways to prove a trig identity. Okay, I don't really care how you get about to prove it. As long as um, your proof is correct, then I am going to accept your solution. So number three, I did not use a subtraction formula for tan. I simply use equivalent trig expressions. Okay, let's see number four. Four, so I use the subtraction formula for cosine and the addition formula for sine. Now be careful. When you expand using the addition formula for sine, you have to put the brackets because subtracting, because this, both these terms, uh, the sum is the addition formula for sine, not just the first term, so all of that. So put the brackets there. Okay, number five, let's see. So number five, I use equivalent trig expressions. So sine of pi minus x is sine x, and tan of pi plus x is tan x. And then simplify, factor, done. Okay, number six, uh, I use my, on the left side, I use the double angle formula for sine and double angle form for cosine. Uh, if you didn't use a version I chose, you would just have an extra step, but no problem. It simplifies to cotan x very nicely. Okay, number seven, let's see. We have, uh, I used a double angle formula. Well, first I actually took the left side and I used the uh, uh, reciprocal identities. So cosecant 2x is 1 over sine 2x and secant x is 1 over cos x and tan x is sine x over cos x. And then I use a double angle formula for sine, simplify, simplify, you can see can x. Number eight, I chose to work with the left hand side. And if you simplify, you actually get just cos x. If you simplify, you're, st you're, you're left with cos x. Now, I stared at the right-hand side and I said, hey, just multiply numerator and, denominator, numerator and denominator by 2 sine x, and then we're done. Because I need to have 2 sine x cos x in numerator because the right side, num the numerator the right side is sine 2x. Okay, let's try number nine. Uh, we have cosecant squared x. I use the Pythagorean identity. Now, if you don't know this version of the Pythagorean identity, then your answer or your solution might look a little longer. Uh, so I use uh, cosecant squared x is equal to one plus cotan squared x, simplifies, and it becomes one minus sine squared x. All right, let's try number 10. So number 10, I would argue, is not a very good question for this handout because I'm able to prove this uh, I proved this identity without a single grade 12 identity. So what are the grade 12 identities we learn? Like co-function identities, the compound angle formulas, the double angle formulas. So this question did not require that knowledge. So I would argue this is a great grade 11 question to be on a test, but not so much for a grade 12 test. Okay, uh, question 11 is a great question as well. Uh, but this is a great, great grade 12 question. So you have to factor, and then you'll use the Pythagorean identity from grade 11, and then the double angle formula for cosine. 
So students struggle with this one because if you don't see the difference of squares, then I can, I can see how this question can be quite troublesome. Okay, number 12, uh, nothing much. Just as one is similar, very similar to one of the previous questions. Subtraction formula for cosine, addition formula for cosine. Don't forget the brackets. Simplify and you're done. 13, let's see, what about 13? Uh, 13, I was able to do it without using a single grade 12 identity. So simplify 1 minus tan x into cos and sine because when I look at the left side, I don't see tan at all. I see cos and sine, so that's what I did. And then I stared really hard at the left side and I said, you know what, multiply numerator by cos x plus sine x and then you're done. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by cos x plus sine x, you'll end up with what you have on the right hand side. Or sorry, what you have on the left hand side. Now, a question I get from students often is, am I allowed to do that? Am I allowed to multiply numerator and denominator, denominator by cos x plus sine x? And the answer is absolutely, because cos x plus sine x all over cos x plus sine x is essentially one. So I'm definitely allowed to multiply by one. All right, 14, great grade 11 question, not so much for grade 12. So just simplify. And then um, Pythagorean identity. One minus cos squared x is sine squared x. Okay, 15a is very much the same as question four, to be honest with you. Uh, addition formula for sine, subtraction formula for sine, some special angles, simplify, you get two cos x. Oh, I forgot, I ran out of room, but this is equal to right side. And then QED. Okay, how about 15b, addition formula for tan on the right side, and then it works out. 15c, let's see, we have cosecant 2x plus cotan 2x equals cotan x, definitely work with the left side, it's much more complicated. I use the reciprocal identity, uh, the quotient identity, uh, simplified, and then double angle formulas, and I get cotan x. Let me show you the rest of the solution. For 15d, uh, you might not have thought of this one, but I took the right side and I just multiplied numerator and, den numerator and denominator by sine t. Um, the reason I did that is because I didn't like the cosecant t. So I know cosecant and sine are reciprocals. So if I multiply those two, I get one. And I really wanted a one in the numerator because I saw left side was quite simply secant two t. So if you didn't think of that, that's perfectly fine. You could have done this, proven this identity a totally different way. But I, like I said, my strategy is always to be the most efficient as possible. Granted, I may not have found the most efficient way. Beautiful, double angle formula, secant 2t, done. All right, three more to go. So we have 15e, uh, definitely work with the right hand side, just some simplifying after a double angle formula for sine, just simplify, not much to say. <coughs> Okay, so for f, what do we have? Uh, I chose to work with the right-hand side. I can see some of you working with the left-hand side, but I chose to work with the right-hand side because I saw cotan 2x, and now cotan 2x is essentially, you take the double angle formula for tan and then take the reciprocal. So the double angle formula for tan is two tan x, all o two, two tan x over one minus tan squared x. So take the reciprocal, which is one minus tan squared x all over two tan x, and then simplifies very nicely. You wanna break up that fraction in, into two terms because the left side is cotan x minus tan x. So break it apart and you're done. Cotan x minus tan x. So the, I would argue that the hardest part to this question is just taking the reciprocal of the double angle formula for cotan, uh, for tan, sorry. All right, G, last one. 
this actually is the half angle formula for cotan. But anyways, uh, double angle formula for cosine, double angle formula for sine, and then simplify and you're done. Alright, hopefully you found this sheet to be uh, not so bad, but this is something you can expect on the test.